Hey y'all, hey shifters, how you doing? Uh, Jen coming at you here on Fun Friday. I hope everybody's had a great week so far. So one thing I'll tell you that I'm a little bit disappointed in so far is I think Courtney and I are the only ones who've been awarded push-ups and it's only been 10. So I'm kind of expecting that maybe, you know, a few more folks will show up. Um, you know, I'm all into upper body and uh, getting stronger. So who else is gonna dish it out next, right? Uh, with that being said, that would mean finishing the video. If you haven't seen it yet, um, this week's topic is curiosity, connection, and congruency. And then also um, posting a nugget on here and sending a copy of the workbook. So who is next to go ahead and dish out some push-ups? Would love to know. Now, um, you, you probably have been, been able to pick up by now that one of the ways for me to really form connection and to take topics um, to life is usually through storytelling. And in the video that I uh, watch this week, so I do the modules just like y'all, um, definitely always keep learning, keep, pu keep pushing myself and um, just, you know, essentially, you know, stay curious, right? So that's one of the things that we talked about this week. There are a couple of things that I wanted to share with you, right? Uh, one of the things that we talked a lot about is the fact that as human beings, um, we have gone through this point uh, where our body and our mind is designed to stay ahead of safety, right? Making sure that we stay safe, making sure that um, any dangers, any animals, anything that might compromise our ability to stay um, alive, essentially, right? Uh, we create a sense of fear around it. And that's completely normal, right? Um, I think one of the things that, you know, as humans, we also like to do is to stay comfortable. And that's for, for a reason, right? It's about our survival. It's about making sure that we continue to, to do the things that we think uh, serve us. So one of the, um, the things we tell our kids all the time, especially when uh, there's tougher days than others, is are you using your wizard brain? Or are you using your lizard brain? And the lizard brain, and again, I think I've mentioned this before, it's about that reptilian side of us that's like, oh, stay away from that. Oh, don't do that. Stay safe. Don't push yourself too much, etc. right? The wizard brain is the one that engages in that curiosity and the thinking and uh, the thoughts and really separates us from just going through the motions, but really asking the deep questions, right? So sometimes as those moments are happening at home, uh, we ask that question and sometimes very easily it's like, oh, that was a lizard brain response and like, okay, let me like re... Uh, center myself so that I can know the best way to go forward and sometimes it's a little bit trickier right and things sneak up on us and we're not quite exactly sure or aren't able to tell in the moment whether we're coming from a wizard or lizard brain so again that's more about the connection uh, that Courtney and Brandon talked uh, about this past week or in the last few days um, to our body right are we doing the actions that essentially serve us in the long haul or are we just operating from a place of fear and um, just constantly going through the motion. So, um, again, makes perfect sense. I've seen some of the posts on here. I appreciate the self-awareness that each shifter is having when it comes to that lizard brain and just know that you're being seen, right? That's part of the process. It's not necessarily just about the weight loss or going through you know, a healthier, nutritious uh, life, but it's also about how do we connect, emotionally connect um, our body um, to our mind. And once that happens, I feel like the mountains really just shift. Um, and, and I've had some of those wins over the last few years. And that's really where we talk a lot about freedom. And that's where freedom comes. Freedom comes when our mind and our bodies are able to shift and also work congruently, right? We're not really all flustered. We have a line of vision, we have a light of sight, and we are doing the things that we say we do. So um, just to share a little bit more about your, uh, myself, one of the things that I'm pretty high on, one of my values in life overall, is having a very high level of um, I say uh, or I do what I say. So say, do um, actions, basically. And I really struggle when I come across leaders that I've worked for, when I come across situations where I'm like, okay, hold on, this person's say is very different than their do, and I'm not quite sure how to go about that. And I've had moments like that in my life as well, where I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this amazing thing. But at the end of the day, um, for some reason, I can't get myself to it, whether it's fear, whether it's feeling like, you know, I don't have the resources I need in order to be successful, whatever it may be. Um, but... One of the things I strive for every single day is high do based on my say. 
Um, and again, that's another point in our life where you're going to be able to achieve that congruency. And things make a lot more sense. Um, I was recently watching or listening to Kelly Pickler. Y'all have heard of her. She uh, was an American Idol. It feels like forever ago, probably, but about 15 years ago. And one of the things that she said that really resonated with me, because we also tell her kids this, is once, um, like, if, if you don't lie, you don't have to remember anything. Like, life gets really simple, right? If, like, you're living your life in congruency, like, there's really not that much complexity associated with it. But when you're not, then things became really, really tricky. Um, and it's like, okay, you're catching yourself all the time, right? And it takes shifts and it takes action and it takes like just becoming habits and know that it's going to be on these six weeks. And that's why we've rolled out things uh, like the Shift Collective and doing the Shift Program again, because honestly, sometimes we have to hear the same message many different times in order for it to sink in. Um, one of the things I tell my folks in HR all the time is it takes seven times a message, seven times in seven different ways in order for you really to connect with it, absorb it, being able to implement it and carry it out. So know that that's really like the phase two of shifters, right? That's what we're trying to accomplish. Um, but beyond that, yes, when it comes to congruency, what's one of my big values? And uh, when I first met Courtney, she she and, and Brandon, we talked a little bit about my book selling experience. And I know I've brought this up before. I feel like it was an epic um, moment in my life where I really had to show up, do a lot of things very quickly that I was really uncomfortable. And there was a clear goal, like there was a clear vision of what success looked like in that program. Um, so constantly, every single day, I was making decisions that would lead me closer to that goal or further from that goal. Um, that program itself was 13 weeks long and some days felt really long and some days felt really short and I think really the short days felt shorter um and I notice this as well when I'm running on the tread some of the blocks feel super long and some of them feel super um short and it's when um, my emotions are tied into me being presently in the moment if I was presently in the moment if I was interacting with people if I felt connection if I stayed curious if I wondered about what's behind the next door I had a great day if I was stuck in my mindset and I posted about this a little bit earlier this week um, if I stuck in my mindset and I was like, well, this day's going to suck and I am not great at this and I don't know why I'm not going out here again, like that um, became a very long, hard day. So one of the things we talked about when we first met was this thing that I, um, I've said before, um, and I think Courtney has a much better way of saying some things um, than I do, and I called it fake it till you make it. Essentially, what we're saying is act as if, act as if you're already an athlete, because you are right? Act as if you're a runner. Because if, by the way, if you're on the treadmill, you're running. Act as if you're strong. If you're lifting weights, you're strong. So act as if. And I called that fake it till you make it, essentially. And that was one of the mentality, one of the things that I was told often in the book field. Fake it till you make it. Go through the motions. Understand the process. Understand yourself. Have trust in yourself until you get to your realization. And um, I, my first summer was definitely hard because there were a lot of sec, uh, new experiences. My second summer um, was hard as well, but I had recruited a team of people. So uh, there was a bit more of a community. I didn't feel so, for lack of a better word, alone. Um, so things felt pretty you know, easy. I knew what to expect. There was some fear behind it. Um, but overall, like the, my second year of book selling went a lot better. Now, let me tell, me tell you about my third year. My third year was extremely hard. It was the first time in my life, um, really, where I was in a significant relationship, and I had been in that relationship for about four months, and the person I was dating did know that I was going to be gone for the entire summer, that my interaction with them was going to be very limited, that I was going to be working very long days and hours, and I was really not going to be able to be reached, um, not just because of the hours I worked, but also the territories I worked were usually in the country, and... It, um, I didn't really have great phone reception. So we knew all that going into it. We had talked about it. We had talked about expectations. We had talked about how we're going to be there for each other and support each other and what, you know, we could do for each other. Um, but it was really hard for me to get out of my head. And this was my third summer. I didn't recruit anybody my third summer. Um, I was trying to finish college and, and things were getting a little bit tricky there with time. Um, but I remember going through the motions of what we called sales school. And I knew the answers to the questions. I knew that everything I needed to be successful and to duplicate my sales that year was inside of me. But I struggled every single second, every single week, every single day. And the reason why is because my emotions were not with me. 
my body and my mind were completely disconnected. My mind and my emotions was where I wanted to be. And I was not where I wanted to be. I did not want to be out selling books. But I had signed up and I figured I had to find a way to do this. So I had a very hard first week. Sure, I made sales, but I wasn't physically or I wasn't mentally um, there. My second week, um, I did fairly well, but again, I wasn't mentally there. And my boss knew this, my, my leader knew this. And he basically gave me a call and said, all right, Jen, I know that you have a lot more in you, but you're not able to execute because essentially you are still at home. Your mind is still at home. Your emotions are still at home. You're still thinking about what you're missing. And um, he said, if you kill it your third week and you have the best week you've had so far, I will go ahead and I will send flowers to your significant other. And that's all I needed to hear. From that moment on, I basically turned on the blazers. I got things done. Um, I was so focused on the fact that I was going to earn those flowers that it did not matter about anything else. And I think at that point is really when he helped me achieve that congruency between the actions I was doing and um, the motions I was doing. And I knew how to sell books, right? But um, my mind wasn't there. And everything clicked uh, for the next 10 weeks. I killed it. It was the best summer that I had all um, the entire book selling career. It was amazing. Learned a lot. I led an org um, that within, I believe there were 20 of us. We made over half a million dollars in sales. We killed it. We killed it in the territory of uh, Kentucky. And um, I think that's mostly where all of us were. So had a great summer, but not being congruent for a while really, really led to a lot of stress and emotional toll. Um, the other thing I, I will, you know, just share with you is we all know the power, um, of connection. Uh, if whether you're at Orange Theory, whether you're at work, whether you're sharing something on your Facebook post, whether it's, um, a, you know, a, a um, sorry, a, a statement or a positive message that you put out there, we all know that when we point one that up or when we continue to inspire others, it comes back to us fivefold, twofold, threefold. It comes to us back to us exponentially, right? So please continue being that for your people. People are watching. They're noticing your wins. They are so excited about what you're doing. And part of what we're trying to do here at Shift is the gift of paying it forward. Um, there's been so many people in my life that have shown up in the toughest moments for me. And I have decided that maybe I can't pay it back to them immediately. And a thank you just doesn't feel like enough sometimes, right? So how do I take the lessons that they've taught me, for example, my dad, and how do I pay them forward? Um, so again, in, in the form of building connections and building shifters, that's one of my asks um, this week. Um, but I will leave you with this. This is my question for this week. I, I see some of us a little bit still struggling. And I hope you're watching today and I have to hope you've done your homework and you've watched the module. There's so many resources out there for you. But when you're having those moments that sometimes try to defeat us, those demons that were not invited to the party, as Brandon said, are you working from your lizard brain or are you working from your wizard brain? Wizard brain. Because I know that each of you are amazing and have so much potential. This is just the beginning, y'all. So take that moment, stay curious, reach out, let us know how we, we can help. And uh, I look forward to interacting with y'all for the next couple of weeks and uh, hopefully forever, right? So again, sign up for the collective. Um, we'll also have a founding rates for the shifters um, program if you choose to do that again. Um, but you'll see that this is not an eight week investment, but a lifetime. So lizard brain or wizard brain next time that those um, unpleasant thoughts really creep in.